Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Tyler Evans from Arite Chiropractic, and we are doing the research live moment today on a topic that's not necessarily related to a symptom or a thing that a patient would um, would uh, come in with or have questions about, or or someone you might know. But uh, it's actually in regards to a uh, uh, a thing that we do in the office um, that helps us do our job. And that's called medical low dose imaging, um, or just X-ray, X-ray imaging. And so there's two different types of imaging. Um, one is ionizing radiation. So um, that is X-ray, cone beam CT, CT scans, um, and then there is uh, another type called. Uh, non-ionizing radiation, and that's a type is magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. And the difference is that uh, X-ray and CT, and cone beam CT, they show bone and density, uh, but mostly bone. So uh, denser things show up brighter, and that's because uh, the the electrons go through and they shine on the on the or they they uh, light up more on the, uh, the the denser tissue, and then we have MRI where uh, what it does is it actually takes the water cells in the body and turns them a little bit, and when it does, they light up on the image, so you see soft tissue and you see less clarity, but you see all of the the cells and how they light up. So those are kind of the differences there. And in an upper cervical chiropractic office, chiropractors take x-rays to see the misalignment in the upper neck so they can measure it, correct it, get you better, and then they should be able to uh, see a change post x-ray. And so what we've come across is that uh, there are some uh, papers and, and some people actually that come in uh, and they have this question about, well, I heard that x-rays are, are, are not good and that you may uh, be long, long on down the road uh, in trouble of possibly uh, types of, of cancer. And that's actually not been proven in the literature, at least from medical x-ray imaging. And this paper here today that we're talking about uh, subjecting radiological imaging to the linear non-threshold hypothesis, a non-sequitur of non-trivial proportion, outlines the whole story. And this goes back a long, long time. It goes back to when, actually World War II, when uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, when we studied what happened in those events, and we studied the distances away from the bomb blast and the, the levels of problems that people had, it got to a place <clears throat> where uh, far enough away from the, from the impact uh, and the explosion, uh, there was a drop off in any uh, determinable problem. And <clears throat> what that's called is stochastic and deterministic effects. And so here in this picture here, we have this, uh, this idea that there are deterministic effects and stochastic effects. Now stochastic effects, or sorry, let's talk about deterministic effects first. So deterministic effects here, they have a dose and then they have severity of effect, right? And so as the dose increases this way, the severity effect increases this way. And it's literally a line straight up. And it's literally due to the amount of radiation hitting the cells and killing the cells off. Now, we also have over here stochastic effects. Now, what's interesting here is that in 1946, so in, I believe it was uh, the 30. Three, or 1930 or 43, 44, 45. I think it was 45 was when they dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But then this guy, um, Her Herman Joseph Mueller, he developed this idea of a linear, linear threshold here. So you can see 
as the dose increases, literally the probability of effect goes up one to one for long-term DNA damage, severity of cancer, um, and uh, probable effect down the road. So what's interesting about this is he based his information in 1946. He got the Nobel Peace Prize. You can look it up. He got his information from a study he did on fruit flies. And I learned about this in genetics class in undergrad before I knew anything about chiropractic and, you know, way back. And uh, I remember the story. It's, it's, a basis of, it's a basic study in genetics. Um, however, that was back before we had peer-reviewed literature back, well, at least in the state and form that it's in today, and publications. And so what happened was his information got kind of skewed and turned to make it prove a point. And that happens, right? And that happens on any literature out there. You can always turn things and, and make, the, make the science show what you want it to show. And so he showed that any dose at any level um, could create a problem on down the road. But what we found out later on was that he actually changed his data a little bit and his cohorts did the same study and couldn't reproduce his findings. And ever since, we've never been able to reproduce that. However, because he won the Nobel Peace Prize and because he was a very um, loud voice back in the 1940s and 50s in the uh, dose effect uh, community, uh, he was heard. And the community at that time was very afraid of radiation. There were the threats of nuclear attacks from uh, the Cold War uh, thereafter and, you know, the whole World War II thing. So uh, there was a lot of fear based around it. Then we had Chernobyl, we had Three Mile Island, we've had Fukushima, all this stuff. And what we found is that never again has that type of low dose of radiation been uh, shown to cause a cancer, cancerous uh, mutagenic effect in DNA and cells. Um, and it's really interesting because if you go in the literature, look it up. It just isn't there. It's not, it's not represented. So what I'm saying, and, and with the point of this whole paper, is that uh, literally for uh, 70 years, the communities around protecting people from radiation, they've been Push, pushing this idea because it protects. It's to protect people, right? Um, and the whole idea here is is that we're trying to prevent problems and, you know, do no harm. And that is the case. And, and we're always got that on our mind. Uh, and the deal, though, is that not taking an x-ray because of this idea of a linear threshold, it means there's a line from zero uh, to a thousand and one-to-one -one correlation that if you increase radiation one, it goes up cancer uh, risk one. And that is that has been the the rule of thumb for 70 years. But that is that that has not been what's in, proven in the literature. And uh, what they're talking about this in, in this paper is that medical imaging should not be subjected to this non sequitur. And it's of non-trivial proportion, meaning it is of, of large, uh, a large um, impact on the community because uh, the healthcare community, because most of us, dentists, chiropractors, medical doctors, we need to see what's going on on the inside to make a diagnosis. And if we can't, that can cause lots of problems uh, down the road for the patient. And, uh, and doesn't get the, the best result for the doctor or for the patient. And we want to get the best results. And so uh, coming to a chiropractor, knowing that the, the story that x-rays cause cancer, it, it's just not been proven in the literature. I'm not saying that it's not true, but it's not been proven in the literature over 70 years. And, uh, you know, measuring tiny doses and in, in the large population, tiny changes in, uh, in cancer down the road, it, it just hasn't been done. And uh, they've studied it. And they've actually seen what we call hormesis. Uh, hormesis is where we actually have a mild um, positive effect because of uh, uh, how our bodies are designed. So if we look at the curve here, this green curve right up here, this is actually hormesis. 
where the, um, the, the body's adaptative response, we have mild stress and the body responds with a stress uh, a change. And so there's apoptosis, DNA heal, like the, the body goes in and changes the DNA and actually makes it better. And if you have no stress, there can actually be more damage. Um, so there's lots of reasons why this idea that an x-ray is, is a bad idea, um, it's just false. It, it, it's not been proven in the literature, I'll put it that way. Um, and that uh, there's actually a lot of literature that refutes it and um, shows that an, an, uh, taking an x-ray is beneficial for the patient, for the doctor, and uh, all around is, is uh, a better idea than not taking an x-ray if you need to. If there's been shown a problem in the exam, if we find a problem, it's really important that we image the area so that we can do the best work to get the best result. And so, you know, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer. Give us a call, 603-380-9184. Uh, um, and again, uh, Dr. Tyler Evans from Arite Chiropractic. Uh, when you go to a chiropractor, if they take x-rays, it's important to see inside the body what's going on, or a dentist or a medical doctor for, the mat for that matter, whoever. Um, so if you have questions, let us know, and uh, I hope you have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.